Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, it's a doozy. It's actually, um, it kind of fell together in my head. This is one for the DVR. The average American, I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, doesn't matter. We're all, we're all scratching our heads over the events of the days. We're looking at things and they just don't make sense. They don't make sense to us. There's, there's, there's leaders all around the world. It doesn't make sense. So what's happening? Well, let's look at some of the things that don't make sense and see if we can tie them together tonight. High oil prices. We have high oil prices, but we're not drilling. In fact, I'll give you an update on this. It's much worse than not drilling. And yet, this weekend, we help Brazil drill. We're giving them permits to do things that we won't do in our own waters, and then we say we want to buy it. Doesn't make sense. The president supports the youth revolution in Egypt. Oh, he's a big cheerleader for that. Democratic revolution, but not for the democratic revolution in Iran and their youth in Iran, too. And then he uses the military in Libya. That doesn't make sense. This administration has praise for the Muslim Brotherhood as peaceful, but cries that the Tea Party is violent. And then when you go to Madison, the unions are actually being violent, and he says they're peaceful. It doesn't make sense. No war for oil. No war. No war without Congress. And then we have war, war without Congress, war with oil for oil, and war with a third Muslim country. That, that really doesn't make sense. France is leading the attack. That never made sense. And we disrespect England and Israel, traditional allies, while we're friendly with our traditional foes. I don't know if you've had this feeling inside that something's not right, but you can't put it all together. But you feel like our allies have changed. Do you really feel like we are being a friend to Israel? Is America on the wrong side? I think we are. Two things to watch for. One, Israel is about to strike back. Israel can only take so much. Nobody in the press is covering what's happening to Israel. But when Israel strikes back, which they are being forced to do now, watch out because the gates of hell are going to open up and we will do nothing and it's worse than that as you will see tonight second thing I think you need to watch for a call to come from Washington to pull out our troops in the Middle East which may be our best option which would send the world into chaos but the other option will be soon to send more troops because of its humanitarian crisis. Either way you slice it, our troops and our nation is at peril. Tonight, I believe I can put some of this together in your head and some of these things will make sense. You won't like the answer, but they will make sense. Hello, America. Nothing in the world makes sense. Tonight, we're going to shed some light on some of the issues and decisions that are leaving people a little confused. And we have some updates uh, on the economic terrorist plot that we exposed on this program Monday. That doesn't make sense. Now, these are not just a run-of-the-mill bad decisions this is putting our country at stake and there is a motivating force behind some of these decisions and sometimes these forces work together intentionally and sometimes unintentionally sometimes it's just the friend of my uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend but I will tell you that these are some of the motivations that I can find that uh, some of them are just tr the traditional stuff People make decisions all the time, and the world is no different, um, on money, on power, and on faith. 
Which are you motivated by? Because those are really the, these are the motives that are controlling the world right now. This is a um, motive that will begin to motivate people to come to the people who are driven by faith, power, or money. You're going to see the motives of destroy Israel. There are people that want to destroy Israel and wipe it off the map. To redistribute the wealth because they care so much. To destroy capitalism or the Western way of life. There are many people that are trying to do this. And some of them believe in an open society like George Soros. I want you to know an open society is, um, is not... An open society is a power structure. It's not like, I want to talk to everybody. Let's have an open discussion. And open. That's not what it is. It is a competitor. People want to create a new world order. There's a lot to cover. I'm going to lay a lot of this out tonight, and we're going to move rapidly. These are the kinds of shows that always get me into trouble. But you know what? We have come to a point in our nation's history that you must speak. Do you know who this man is? This is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. This is something that actually hangs in my office just down the street. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. I look at this every day. Every day. Another way of saying it here in America is this. Here it is. Basically, this is the ad in New York. 60 million eyes in the city, and we're counting on all of them. If you see something, say something. Well, I see something, and I'm going to say something, because that's what we promised each other we would do on 9-11. If you see something, say something. And if we don't have responsible people, enough people in this country that care enough about this country and freedom, that will do their homework, not run off all half-cocked, do your own homework. You don't believe me? Look it all up. Do your homework. Do not take my opinion. And please, enough, George Soros. He's got 86 people now on staff at Media Matters. 86, and the CEO of Media Matters said, well, we need to hire some more. He was fundraising. We need to hire some more because it takes a lot of people to correct all of Glenn Beck's nonsense. There are 10 people, 10, that work on this program. 10 that put it together. 10. It takes 86 to try to tear us down. Tonight, you're going to see the big picture. But I want you to remember this man. And please read this book. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. If you see something, say something. There are people who are watching this program and they say, Glenn, I know. And every day I see it get closer, but I don't know what to do. I will say this till my dying breath. This is a sacred and special land. It is. I know there are many in this country that don't believe it. It is sacred and special. And it was set apart for a special purpose, and I don't know what it is. But I don't think we've hit it yet. And as long as the citizens that inhabit this land turn to God and try to serve him and be good, we can expect his protection. The founders talked about it. He is the only one that can shield us. And I am telling you, for as much trouble as I'm going to show you tonight that we are in, and it, it will cascade, you will start to see the whole picture. I will tell you this, for as much trouble as there is out there, with firm reliance on the, divine, uh, the uh, protection of divine providence, I tell you now, expect miracles in your lifetime. I believe you will see the hand of God protecting this nation. I promise you that. A great storm is coming, but we will make it. Okay. There is a worldview. There is a worldview that has been allowed to fester. And it is anything other than a republic. There is the open society. And look how many people are swarming around an open society with George Soros. There's the United Nations. And there's so many people in the United Nations. There's a caliphate. There's communism. They all want global domination. 
And then there is the Jeffersonian Republic, and here, here we are. We haven't been organizing, but they have. And they've been allowed to organize and fester and grow because nobody believed they could ever come to this point. Nobody would ever believe that you could defeat the U.S. without guns. And that the world would turn its guns on freedom. But we are here, gang. We're here. So here we go. Here are the things that just don't make sense in Libya. In Libya. I, I don't even understand Libya. Let me go back to the beginning on Libya. You have to go before Libya, you have to go to Tunisia, because everything else is dominoes. Tunisia. On January 31st, I said, Tunisia might be our Archduke Ferdinand moment. I've been looking for it for the last five or six years. Archduke Ferdinand. Ferdinand's assassination ended up sparking a world war, but at the time, the public didn't perceive the significance of that moment. Tunisia may indeed, in the end, be our modern-day Archduke Ferdinand moment that will plunge the world into war. The press covered it, but if the uprising stopped, if they would have stopped there, it just would have been a blip. WikiLeaks was inf influential in kickstarting that uprising. WikiLeaks, anti-capitalism, knock America down, redistribute the wealth, anti-Israel. There's all kinds of motives with WikiLeaks. But they're just telling the truth. And so it starts in WikiLeaks. And then the uprising spreads. And the next place it really catches fire is Egypt. Now, when it's catching fire here in Egypt, I explain this theory on what is happening. And I've been criticized before. In fact, that's all that ever happens is nobody ever takes my theories and proves them wrong. What they do instead is just prove me to be some sort of a idiot or whatever. Great. It's not about me. I have never, I've seen opposition, I have never seen opposition strike this fast, this hard, as this one did on the media. And they all said the same thing. The people who are applauding Al Jazeera and saying, we got real news there, are calling me a conspiracy theorist because this is what I said. Radicals, Islamists, communists, and socialists will work together against Israel, against capitalism, and overturn stability. The protests will become contagious. They will cascade, sweep the Middle East, begin to destabilize Europe and the rest of the world. Conspiracy theory. What was it that Cass Sunstein suggested? I want you to remember. Can you give me the picture of Cass Sunstein real quick? It's on the board up there. You know, you got to remember Cass Sunstein here because he's going to play an important role tonight. Cass Sunstein, he is in the White House Office of Information. Important. Information and regulation. Also important. He wrote a paper where he was talking about how government might ban conspiracy theories somehow defined, and that you should discredit conspiracy theories even if they ended up being true by just calling them conspiracy theories, and the government should actually get actively involved in that. Okay, so we're discredited, but Egypt, Egypt has the president's reaction too. Now, the president goes out of his way to support the uprisings. Rise up! Rise up! Now, this is odd because that is the the Egypt is the only thing that is protecting Israel. They have this huge army. And that's, that's the, 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 the keystone, if you will, of protecting Israel and keeping some sort of peace.